It is incredible, yet true. We are witnessing the unfolding of events long prophesied to take place during the last generation before the return of Christ. We knew that it was coming. We were almost eager to see this day because it means the rapture is much closer. But as the day approaches, it becomes less an abstract notion and more a crushingly painful reality. It has made that transition from theoretical possibility to actual fact. We always knew in theory that one day Christians would be marginalized to the point of insignificance. We always knew that one day some new religion having two horns like a lamb but speaking as a dragon would overspread planet Earth. For decades we've made a guessing game out of what it would look like and who would be its leader. As we see the hard and fast answers crowding out our best guesses, the game isn't as much fun as it used to be. In fact, it isn't fun at all anymore. This is what we've been expecting. It is what the Bible forecasts for the last days. Jesus said the tribulation period would be a time so terrible that if he didn't return to put a stop to it, there would be no flesh saved out of it. So it's entirely reasonable to expect that period leading up to it would be unpleasant to say the least. Jesus prophesies that the time will come when those who kill you will think they do God's service. He reminded us that the world must hate us because it hates him, but that doesn't make it any easier when it happens. There are two competing sets of values here, and it's out of that conflict that all the angst arises. If we are where I believe we are on Bible prophecy timeline, then America's and the West, the days are numbered. If we are where I believe we are, then the decline we are experiencing is both inevitable and unstoppable. Now, this is only a part of the big picture. There are other bigger and scarier parts yet to come. Uh, why are they scarier today than they were, say, 10 years ago? It isn't as if Bible prophecy changed in the last 10 years. What we are experiencing is the realizations of our expectations. Did anybody really think that witnessing the unfolding days of the last day's prophecy would be fun? If you did, now you know. You also know why you were but one of the only tiny handful of prophecy nuts. And I say were because as we move forward on the Bible timeline, prophecy doesn't seem so nuts anymore. In the grand scheme of things, very few Christians in these last days have been called as watchmen. Definitely not for everybody, and for some it's too much. That's why we are necessary to give the warning. God has set each of us in the place he wants us to be for this time and place in human history. That doesn't mean it's a pleasant place. We had our pleasant time. But God in his wisdom, and for reasons known only to him, has called us, you and me, and others like us, as witnesses. Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, it's infuriating. And yes, it's frightening. And yes, it's unfair. Why can't you be one of those Christians just strolling through life, tra la 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 in blissful ignorance? I don't know, because you can't. God called you, and you answered the phone. I'm sorry, this is a bell that you can't unring. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 through 5. Somebody has to watch in all things, do the work of evangelists, and make full proof of the ministry to which God called them. And that's the charge. And listen, you accepted it, or you wouldn't be listening to these words now. Now the evil days are upon us, and somehow we are surprised to find we don't like it. And, and I'm not saying that sarcastically. I'm as surprised as anybody at how surprised I am. I thought I was made of sterner stuff than that. So what are we to do as Christians? Our job is to be witnesses. Watch and observe and give the warning. You know, the, the Bible says that Noah preached for 120 years and never made a single convert. But when the rains came down, Noah still got to ride out the storm on the ark. It's easy to become discouraged and frustrated and even angry. It's natural, but it's a part of the plan that God of the universe has not only let you in on, he's included you as a necessary part. The night before the crucifixion, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He went to be alone and pray, but before he did, Jesus asked the apostles to stay up and pray with them. He warned them not to fall asleep. Nevertheless, they did, and they were finally awakened when soldiers arrived to arrest Jesus. 
In, in a similar way, Jesus warns us not to be caught sleeping when he returns, Mark 13, 36. To illustrate, he told a story of ten bridesmaids. Of the ten bridesmaids, five were foolish and five were wise. The five foolish bridesmaids didn't take enough oil for their lamps when they went to wait for the bridegroom. Uh, when they left to buy more oil, the bridegroom came and they missed out on the marriage feast. Uh, Jesus warned us not to be like the foolish bridesmaids. He said, you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. Matthew 25, 1-13. In another parable, Jesus once again commanded us to watch. You too must keep watch, for you do not know when the master of the household will return. It could be evening, midnight, dawn, or daybreak. Don't let the master find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. Mark 13, 35-37 The reasons to expect Jesus to return at only a moment have markedly increased. Yet to great amazement, many Christians seem more complacent and ignorant of all the signs than ever. Uh, why, I don't know, but I continue to sound the alarm, and you should too. The Bible says if we recognize the signs and don't tell others about them, we're no different than a watchman who sees an invading army and doesn't sound the alarm. If we fail in our role as watchmen, God says he'll hold us accountable for those who perish. Ezekiel 33, 1-6 All the signs Jesus and the prophets said to look for are present right now. For almost 2,000 years, no Christian could ever say that. Our generation is an eyewitness to signs previously Christians can only dream about. If the signs are telling us the tribulation and the second coming are near, it means the rapture is even closer. So don't fall asleep and don't let anyone around you fall asleep. It's never been more important to stay awake. Jude 1, 24 through 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. He can keep you from falling. He will present you faultless before the throne with exceeding joy. He knows what he's doing. And he's let you in on some of the details. So here's what we know, and what we know for sure. There's lots to be scared of, but nothing to be worried about, because he is able, and he loves you more than you know. And ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for listening. If you are inspired or enjoyed this message and wish to donate, we have a couple of very easy options. You can find both our PayPal and Patreon links below. In addition, we have some really nice 316 Exposure Christian merch on our store website. Uh, you can also find that in the description as well. Um, I've had a lot of, um, not a lot, but quite a few individuals uh, sending me messages saying that they've been automatically unsubscribed. Uh, for whatever reason, YouTube does that. I'm not to judge, but um, I think we can all figure it out. Uh, please remember to hit the notification bell. I put out content daily or at least every two days. Um, if you're not getting the notifications, of course, you need to resubscribe. Um, so remember to please subscribe, like, share, and until next time, God bless you and your families. Thank you.